Good morning and welcome Patriot Radio News Hour live on this Tuesday here in the Valley of the Sun. Somebody please turn it off. It's going to be back over 100 degrees. Uh, it's, I hate to say it, we are going to break every, every heat record known to man here in Arizona this year. Most days over 115, most days over 110, and unfortunately most days over 100 is going to fall as we're going to, the triple digits are back, hopefully for the last time. Hopefully for the last time. Got a couple more days. Hopefully that'll be it. And uh, we can resume our lives. The overseeding of the golf courses is just about over. My arm is feeling better. I'm getting ready. I, I, I will say I played a quote-unquote practice round Sunday, car path only, trying to get those steps in. Uh, but it's going to be, it will be, I promise, it's going to be beautiful here. Just wait a little bit longer. 800-951-0592 is our website, of course, or uh, it's our website. It's our toll-free number, allamericangold.com. There you go. That's the website. Uh, welcome to all the podcasters and uh, all the streamers out there, at uh, whether it's at KXXT in Phoenix where, uh, Ramon has done such a great job, and I know that we had uh, some issues uh, with the broadcast in, uh, with KXXT, but that should be over now. Uh, they, they've gotten everything restored. You know, they had a a uh, an attack, uh, one of those web attacks, where they wanted them to be you know pay them in Bitcoin and all that stuff. Uh, so if if you're if we're still having issues, let me know. Drop me an email or call the office here, but those issues should be resolved. Uh, shout out to Ramon who kept us on the air uh, during that. And then, of course, the mothership up there in Johnstown. Uh, we, we got a full office up there now. We got Bernice, we got Jack, we got Jason, we got Brian. Uh, they're all doing a great job uh, as well. Uh, where do I start? Where do I start? I, I, I'm i not sure. I guess uh, today gold and silver are down. And I'm going to tell you, as I always do, buy the dips. Uh, looks like right now, and it, 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 the day's not over, uh, but it's hanging out at this 1890, 1892 level, which would be another higher high, or a higher, excuse me, another higher low, uh, which is what we want to see. Uh, remember, the last low we had was in the 1870 range, uh, so we'll see it. We'll see how it shakes out today. The news was uh, we got a, a, I'll call it bad news, I guess, on Johnson and Johnson. Uh, remember, there's three companies that are going to be first with a vaccine. I've been telling you all along. I've already declared who's going to be first: Pfizer. Uh, and I did that that show on on the vaccine and all that for them. Uh, that has to be stored at sub-zero temperatures, so that's that makes it a little harder. A lot of a lot of doctors' offices and things like that don't have the ability uh, to store at sub-zero. Uh, so they they're going to be first. Moderna is probably going to be second, also a sub-zero. What we liked about Johnson and Johnson was it could be refrigerated. So it could be available to everyone. Now, Johnson & Johnson wasn't going to be available to the end, you know, to really third or fourth quarter of next year. Uh, their clinical trial got put on hold. Uh, usually what happens when a trial gets put, put on hold is people have come down with some kind of illness. And, they, and then they've got to figure out, okay, is it related to the vaccine that we gave them, right? What is it? You know, and, and so uh, does it mean that it's done? Uh, but it's one of those things that happens, and apparently, and I didn't know this. I learned this yes, was it yesterday or the other day? Um, with with Goldman Sachs, right? Goldman Sachs, it was, yeah, and it was yesterday. Yesterday came out and said short the dollar. Now the dollar is rallying a little bit today. It's not like it's not like the dollar's uh, flying here. It's like ninety three forty. Uh, yesterday it was at ninety three, but. They were saying the least likely outcome for a dollar to rally from here was Trump had to win, no vaccine. So apparently, no vaccine means the dollar rallies. And I think why? Because yesterday, because that's count, counterintuitive to me. I'm like, no vaccine, that's not good. 
But I guess the way they look at it is because we still are the reserve currency for right now, right? We're still at 60% of the reserves are held in dollars. That no vaccine would also mean no vaccine for Europe, right? No vaccine for if or England, right? No vaccine for anybody. And uh, we have the ability to borrow more money, I, I guess. I don't know. Uh, but that that's that was the big news of the day was the pause by Johnson and Johnson in the trials after unexplained illnesses. So that's the official word, unexplained illnesses. And we had bank earnings out today. I'm going to talk about those next. We had two big ones, uh, number one and number three, J.P. Morgan and Citibank. Of course, remember, while well, Citigroup, I guess, or with subsidiary is Citibank. Both of them guilty of felony charges of ripping people off. They were the first to lead off earnings season. And remember, I clued you in last week all about the write downs and the lack of them. Uh, both of them beat the street. Don't be fooled. Pittance put in loan loss reserves. JP Morgan, as an example, didn't even set aside a billion dollars. Uh, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. Wall Street kind of understood that. Wall Street is down today as well. Uh, but when we get back, we'll talk a little more about the bank earnings and then news out of hotels that don't paint a very good picture for what the banks did. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. We're back. 800 592 Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, metals plans. We are going to be done with metals plans. Uh, I apologize. We wanted to be done Friday. Uh, but, of course, the post office now significantly limited us. Uh, but we, we have the last, I don't know, I, I think 20-ish maybe 25 something like that not that many so between today and tomorrow even with the post office limits uh that would would uh that'll finish those so i apologize that we can't go faster uh, i'm hoping uh next quarter we're gonna try something a little different uh don't know <laughs> i don't know if it'll be any faster or not uh, but by the way, I want also everyone to know on the, the metals plans, people, the post office is taking significant amounts of time. Uh, most of the deliveries outside of Arizona are taking about a week. Some are taking 10, 11 days to get there if you're uh, in one of those remote you know who you are. One of those remote locations, uh, it, it, it's going to take a little bit. Here's the good part. They get there. Okay, They get there. And and so I just wanted everybody to know uh, this time around, we kind of went smallest to largest. So, so those of you uh, that were, say, over... 1500 bucks a month you're you're all the last guys and, and so you guys are going out uh today and tomorrow and i and, and we'll be done with it uh worst case scenario if they give us a lot of problems uh thursday but all the metals plans uh are are boxed up or being boxed up and ready to be heading out the door we appreciate the patience it was another another record quarter for the metals plans uh, just great stuff in there too. Uh, you know the, the prices were great. Uh, you know we had that that last pullback right before the end of the quarter there that allowed uh, the metals plan people to take really good advantage of pricing and and got some great stuff in there as well. So if you want to sign up for that or learn more about the metals plan, you can give us a call here or go out to uh, allamericangold.com and click on that metals program icon. And we can uh, tell you all about it. We had the banks out. We had J.P. Morgan and Citigroup. And if you are a headline reader, oh, they beat it. Yeah, woo, yeah, way to go. Right? All of it on revenue or uh, all of the revenue. I shouldn't say all of it, but the vast, vast majority of the revenue trading. Right? Uh, and remember, last week, Citigroup, <laughs> Citigroup was so 
bad. They they got the the worst thing that you could possibly get from the currency of the comptroller and the Federal Reserve about their banking practices. And they had issues with risk management, which just means, hey, your loan losses are, are bad and you're lying about it. Really, just really probably more or less means you're lying about it. Uh, and you're lying. Now, granted, we know the central bank allows lying. I mean, we, we've discussed this at infinitum uh, on the stress test stuff. They allow that stuff. That So how bad was the lying? Probably a lot worse than we want to admit. And then also the other one that you really don't want to hear, liquidity. That was J.P. Morgan last week. But both of them, miraculously, hey, everything's A-OK. -okay. Uh, J.P. Morgan, 90, I think it was a, like a 98% per <laughs> reduction in loan losses, right? They set aside $600 million this quarter. That was it. But I told you last week that was going to happen. Remember, uh, and, you know, you don't have to be that smart if, if you follow it enough. And again, you guys don't have to. Let me do I'll do it for you. But I, I told you all last week the banks are going to to beat all their numbers because they're not going to put any money away. Uh, and, and they're going to wink, wink, nod, nod it. And that's exactly what happened on both sides, both City and J.P. Morgan. Uh, yet the Dow is still down. Well, and, and here was the funny thing about it is when we started out this morning, we heard from two companies. Uh, I'll start with the one we already talked about last week, AMC. You know, Royal Theaters, they're closed. AMC, and I told you, AMC d doesn't even have enough money to make it to the end of the year. And last week, they were trying to say they had six months. I didn't tell you six months. I told you they didn't have enough to, end, to make it to the end of the year. This morning, they said, we don't have enough money uh, for the end of the year. Now, they're trying to say early 2021. No, no, no. Listen, they don't have enough money to make it out to the end of 2020. Uh, shares were down 8%. Uh, they're, they're down. AMC stock is down 44% year to date. The fact of the matter is I don't even know why uh, they're valued at anything at all. AMC said it was able to reopen 494 of the 598 theaters. Now, it's only limited capacity, but it doesn't matter because they can't even fill the limited capacity. There's nobody in the theaters. Of course, why would you go? There's no movies out. Uh, 20 to 40 percent, like I said, the problem is there's nobody in them. They're not even 10 percent full. Uh, the remaining theaters that are not open, California, Maryland, New York, North Carolina, Washington. So outside of North Carolina, the others, yeah, you get it. Uh, the theaters, uh, that's uh, around 70% of the company. There are only four major films on the slate for the rest of the year. Uh, Crocs, wait, The Cruds, A New Age, I don't even know what that is. Uh, C-R-O-O-D-S, uh, maybe I'm missing something, I don't know. Uh, Free Guy, Coming to America 2. And Wonder Woman 1984, and I'm pretty positive Coming to America 2 is going to get canceled. I don't know about the rest of it. It probably all will be because that's been the trend. So get ready. Uh, AMC is going to be the next one. And, those, and, and again, this is going to be, I don't know, 50,000 jobs. It's a lot. It's a lot of jobs. That wasn't the big news, though. And, and I only bring that up because all of the, the debt that the theaters have, uh, you know, and these banks saying, oh, we don't have any loan loss reserves. I mean, AMC and Royal both, uh, the two major U U.S. movie houses, are, are not in operation. And for Royal, they're already into bankruptcy, and AMC's going to be by the end of the year. Here was the other one, though, that, that really bothered me. Uh, Delta lost over $5 billion in the quarter, and again, no loan loss reserves. And then the other big news uh, came out of Best Western. Of course, we know Best Western. That is the hotel chain. They said that uh, 38,000 of the nation's 57,000 hotels will close within the next six months. 
without further government assistance, according to the American Hotel and Lodging. So they're saying right now, there's 57,000 hotels. It feels like Arizona. I feel like we've got 57,000 hotels. It's incredible. They're everywhere. Um, they're saying 38,000 of the 57,000. I mean, what percent is that? 67% of the nation's hotels are going to go under uh, without another government bailout. They're waiting for Washington to approve another round of rescue. Uh, according to the CEO of Best Western, uh, tour tourism, travel, and hospitality uh, being decimated, he was saying millions of workers continue to be unemployed while hotel and motel owners scramble to try to keep their businesses open. It's really hard to say when the recovery is going to be. I thought we already were having a recovery. This is the hard part. Can we really have GDP growth with, I mean, I'm thinking about, like, Disneyland's closed. Las Vegas. I mean, it's open, but for all practical purposes, it's closed. Right? Even Disney World in Florida, every month, they cut hours, cut jobs, close hotels. Nobody's on the airplanes. Right, They need a bailout, which apparently they're not getting. So I'm, I'm assuming we're going to see all the layoffs there. Now the hotels are saying 67%. So two out of every three. Just drive down here in Arizona. Count three hotels. Two of them are out. Just in this air park, and we're not like the Scottsdale Air Park over here. There's got to be, and I'm not kidding, in a five-mile radius. I bet you we've got a dozen hotels right here, and just just in my office. So you're saying nine out of twelve are going to go out of business? Well, I guess eight, eight out of twelve. I don't want to make it worse, right? Eight out of twelve are are, are going to be out, and yet the banks are saying there's no loan losses. Well. You know why? Because they were told by the central bank, hey, don't put that in there. Don't put the airlines in there. Don't put the hotels in there. I mean, don't put anything in there because we're waiting for the government to bail everybody out. And again, remember, the Federal Reserve's already given a number. They want a $3.5 trillion bailout uh, for the U.S. economy. How can we have GDP growth with all of these things not open? I mean... The airlines have cut flights so much. Some of them are kind of full. You know, my, when my wife went to Chicago and back, when uh, we had to take our son back to school, because he couldn't stay with us anymore. I mean, he would have had, you know, we talk about uh, mental, what it does to kids mentally. At 21 years old, I can't imagine a worse fate than having to live in your uh, the room of your parents' house. But that's kind of the growing trend, isn't it? And the flight to Chicago, empty. Like, they, they literally, everybody had a row to themselves. The flight coming back, though, was, was full. You know, again, Phoenix is, is hanging in there. Uh, it, it's hard to know when the recovery is going to begin. The situation we are in is not sustainable. It's really bad. This is the CEO of Best Western. As people use up all their savings in reserves, they're going to default on their loans. And then what? They said the hospitality sector alone saw 9.1 million layoffs. Here's my question. If they laid off 9.1 million, how can the government say that the people unemployed is, is, is only 7 million and change? Right? Kind of, right? You're just scratching your head. Because, you know, it's not like they're the only ones laying off. I know some people are, you know, some people can get another job, but not most. I don't know. Anyway, so the... They're waiting for a bailout, uh, and I don't know how they're going to get it. Uh, is it through another round of PPP? I don't know. And that's the problem. How much money are we talking about? And now the banks aren't going to report it, so we don't know. The only thing I can imagine is they were told not to. Right? I don't think, you know, now obviously, do I think, Jamie Dimon, he called the CEO of Citigroup, who called Bank of America, who called Wells Fargo, who called U.S. Bank, and they all they all got together, right, and said, hey, you know what? And, of course, remember, they didn't meet together. They had a Zoom meeting, right? They all got on their Zooms. 
And they all said, hey, guess what? If you don't report any, we won't report any. I don't think that happened. Maybe it did. Here's what I really think happened. There was a Zoom meeting, all right. Right, and Jay Powell, or, or maybe it was the Federal Reserve governor, right? Because Jay Powell probably doesn't want to get his hands dirty. So wherever they were headquartered, like Wells Fargo is in uh, California. So the San Francisco Fed probably called them, right? I think uh, B of A is in North Carolina, I think. So they, 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 whoever, the Richmond Fed probably called them and just told them, hey, listen, just leave all that stuff out. We'll wait for bailouts instead. What happens? That's the beginning of the next year. More bailouts. Patriot Radio News Hour. 800-951-0592. Now, listen, there's a lot going on, right? We got the presidential election. That That's stressful, right? Every poll now seemingly getting worse and worse, right? Uh, Biden, Biden's leads get bigger and bigger now today. 91% chance he's going to win. Let's hope that's just wrong. And again, we don't like to answer surveys, so it could be. That silent majority, my fingers are crossed. I'm, I'm going to say this. I, I'm more nervous than I was. And I think the lack of debates and the fact that uh, Biden really doesn't have to go out and do any speaking has really helped the, the Democrats. Uh, they, then you think about your job. W- what's going on? Are we going to reopen? Is there going to be a second wave uh, You know, already? And I, I don't know how how much to put into it uh, but the number of the amount of cases is starting to rise again you know I and and I'm I want to believe well you know the states have reopened you know in Arizona we've been reopened for a while but the numbers are they're, they're rising so we, we got to be you got to watch I don't know with mean, the cold weather and all that stuff and I just worry uh, because that second wave of the span the quote-unquote Spanish flu which, by the way, we did that. The Spanish flu, it was the second wave that was really deadly. So, uh, I'm, you know, but you got to worry about it. We don't know. Right? We, we look at uh, un- unemployment, right, and, and people are going to be losing their jobs. There's no bail of to that. Nope, can't do it. And now you're hearing from all these places that are like, hey, listen, we're weeks away. Some companies are days away, weeks away, months away from going under and, and more jobless claims. And, and the longer we go without any stimulus, the more likely it is to go to have lots to worry about. But I'm going to help you today. You know, we have those emotional support animals. I mean, you've seen them, right? People on the airplanes with their dog or their cat. And, and you know, you're thinking about COVID now. Right, the mental anguish. Listen, it's I can't imagine. I, I, I'm grateful that I'm here in Arizona. I can't imagine being in New York or California, Washington. You know those states where they're still really locked down. There's a new thing happened. There's a new therapy animal. It's the latest thing. It, it's not a new concept, but this particular one uh, may be a little harder here in Arizona. But in Colorado, this is right up people's alley. You know, as everyone's mental health is being tested out there. The practice originated in a rural town in the Netherlands. Co-Nufflin, which, uh, by the way, uh, my, I don't know what they speak, they're Dutch. It's, it's not the greatest, so I may have mispronounced that. But it means cow huggy. I'm not making it up. It is gaining huge popularity now. Yeah, go out there and hug a cow. Now there's some there's some science behind it. I don't know if the science is any good. Maybe this is a Joe Biden thing. We're gonna follow the science. It's not just the act of hugging a cow. Now, if you're in a nursing home, uh, I don't know that you can do this, right? You know, you 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 can't go to the cow and I don't know that the cow is can be put on the uh, visitation list but it's not just the act of hugging the cow that re, uh, relieves stress and it also lowers anxiety 
Uh, for those of you uh, who have been like me and had the COVID and got dexamethasone, uh, you know all about anxiety. This may help. I don't know. Let me tell you right now, when I first got out of the hospital, if I thought hugging a cow would have helped me, I would have done it. Believe me. Of course, I wasn't allowed out of my house, so I don't know how that would have worked. But they're saying that making contact with any furry critter, so the albino critters, right, or the alopecia critters, uh, they don't count, right? You hugging them is not going to do they don't. If they're not furry, it won't help. I think that's why people like to hug me. I'm furry. You know, want to hug it out? You guys need to hug, hug it out. Let me know, right? I'm here for you. I'll be your emotional support. Hugging any furry critter. Brooke just about spilled her coffee right there. Could help improve one's mental health. Cows are the optimal cuddling buddy. But apparently, hugging a cow is better than hugging your dog or hugging a kitty cat. Even those out there, you know, uh, I don't know about the reptiles. It doesn't, you know, they're not furry, so I don't think those count. And it's not just because they're adorable. Oh, no, no. And they smell good, too. According to a study back in 2007. Now, I'm going to be really upset if our government paid for this study. I'm hoping that since it was in the Netherlands that they did. But in the Journal of Applied Animal Behavior Science. You know, obviously, that's a very popular journal. I'm sure all of you subscribe to that. But in the 2007 study, if you find this 2007 journal, it'll tell you right in there that the cows, they, they show cues. They give out cues of deep relaxation. Yes. Think about, you know, you're, you're, you're doing your yoga and your, your meditation, oh, oh, maybe the moo of the cow is what the moo, a moo. <laughs> Stretching out and allowing their ears to fall back when massaged in particular areas of their neck and upper back. So you can't just hug them anywhere, okay? It's got to be in the neck, in the upper back. For those of you that want to go hug a cow, please do not just run out in the field. Uh, the ranchers tend to, you know, get a little upset if they think you're out there messing with the cow. So get permission first. And I'm pretty sure that the cow's got to be alive. Okay? Cow cuddling is believed, is believed to promote... Positivity. Yay. There you go. Listen, all of us are stressed out. We're all going to go hug a, hug a cow. You're right in the, again, in the neck and upper back area. And you'll just have positive thoughts. It's like a oxytoxin to humans. I can't make this up. How do they know this? The hormone released in social bond, uh, bonding. The calming effects of curling up with a pet or emotional support animal, it seems are accentuated when you actually hug cows. There you go. See? What's a positivity right now? Save a horse, hug a cow. Pager Radio News Hour. We'll be back right after the break. 800 951 you know what, we did, You know what it does? What does it do to the cow? Like, whoa, I got all this bad juju. Now this guy, maybe it's the newest thing, though. Right? And, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Have you heard? Is Halloween on or off? I don't know. All I know is my wife and I, we were in Walmart. And I hate to say it, but we were. You got to shop somewhere. And, uh, wow. They had obviously ordered all that candy before COVID. It was everywhere. I mean, the pallets, they couldn't, they went from the front door, excuse me, the front door, I mean, all, they had it in the garden center. They had so much of it. It was everywhere. I don't know. Is it on? Is it off? But instead of the haunted house, like Fear Farm, maybe what they could do, 
is the farmers could open up their 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 herd to, to cow hug you know and everyone could line up socially distanced right you line up you know six feet apart got your mask on you know the farmer's wife she's out there at the pen and you know it's 20 bucks and you get uh, you know whatever you know five or ten minutes of hug time with a cow uh, like I said, make sure you get permission. By the way, I know we think that, that cows are slow. You know, and they don't like to move a whole lot. Uh, I'm not going to say how I know it, but let's just say when I was a much younger human being in my teenage years, I may or may not have been in a field of cows. And uh, let me just tell you, yeah, you don't want to make them angry. And they run a whole <laughs> heck of a lot faster than you think. Uh, I'll just say I'm just saying that. Okay, so don't just don't just run out there and randomly try to start hugging cows. Uh, it could be dangerous for your health. Not to mention the study never even says what happens to the cow. I mean, if you feel better, does the cow feel worse? I don't know. Uh, speaking of feeling worse, will the last person out of Illinois turn out the lights? And it's so funny. So my son goes to to college in Illinois, and he's a finance major of all things shock right he is actually um doing the finances for the lake county republican party one of the jobs he got uh through the school and apparently uh there's a desperate need for finances in the state of illinois they are set to borrow from the federal reserves municipal liquidity fund for the second time now I bring this up, not because it's shocking to us, right? It's Illinois. Of course, they're, they, don't, they don't have any money. But there's a fund that the central bank has that when cities and states can't go out and borrow money to pay their bills, they can go to the central bank, and the central bank will give them money. So I'm sitting there thinking about Nancy Pelosi. And, oh, no, without money for the states and, and the cities, I'm not signing anything. There's money available. Yes, they're going to have to borrow it, right? which kind of insinuates, right? At some point, you'd pay it back. Trust me, Illinois is never paying it back. But it's not like there isn't money out there. I guess that's my point. Now, the city, which already borrowed $1.2 billion earlier this year, and I use them as the example. Everybody that had to borrow money all needs to borrow it again. The airlines need to borrow money again. The small business owners need to borrow money again, right? The retailers need to borrow money again. The movie theaters need to borrow money again. The cruise industry needs to borrow money again, right? Now the states and the cities that need to borrow money again. Illinois, by the way, right now, they're the only state that's had to do it. So how bad is their finances, right? And, of course, we know there's more to follow. Uh, other entities are allowed to borrow as well. So you don't even have to just be a state or a city. You could be something uh, like in New York, where who was it that borrowed uh, in the state of the transportation uh, division of the state of New York? They've also borrowed money uh, from this program. Uh, they're not saying exactly how much more Illinois needs to borrow. They borrowed $1.2 million. Uh, the Metropolitan Transportation Authority, I was looking for it, is the, the entity. The Metropolitan Transportation Authority of New York has also borrowed from this fund. Uh, the fiscal reality is starting to kick in as, uh, <laughs> as the state of Illinois was forced to pay punitive rates when it borrowed eight. Hundred million dollars from the market in May. Listen to this number. The state had to pay 5.65%. I remember my first home loan back in 2000. I had to pay seven and a quarter. Right? 565 from a state that you know that that's horrid. That puts Illinois out of business. They couldn't borrow any more money at that kind of interest rate and so they needed to go to the fed this is how bad the problem is you know and i laugh when they talk about oh well we're not going to raise rates till 2023 rates really can't rise 
because the debt loads now are so significant that just think about 20 years ago, 5.65 would have been a good rate. That would have been amazing. And now when they borrow from the Fed, by the way, if you were a AAA, which I don't, I don't think any states are AAA, uh, you could have borrowed at 1.1%. That tells you how broken everything is. Uh, the Fed, uh, when it borrows money, they're not saying, but it's, uh, I think it's about 3% or 2.2%, something like that. So a significant savings. So again, my, my thing that I wanted to let all of you know, this thing with Nancy Pelosi wanting all this money for the states, wanting all this money for the cities, do the Federal Reserve will loan it to anybody. Just not a small business. Now think about this. They'll loan it to Illinois, but they won't loan it to me or you. Because, you know, that's too hard. We can't. In. Remember, they're not here for you. That's why you buy gold. Got to have something that, well, that isn't part of their system. Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. 800-951-0592. Gold's down 30. Silver's off almost a buck today. Uh, we got some uh, silver eagles are in stock. They're back on the website. Uh, $20 Liberties and St. Gaudens. I'm going to put those on sale uh, as soon as the show's over, they're going to be $2,100. So think about yesterday, they were $2,150. Uh, so a nice opportunity in the $20 gold market. Uh, U.S. $20 Liberties and Saints at $2,100. Rolls of Silver Eagles available at 615 today. Uh, after the pullback this morning, the Dow is down. Uh, the banks have come out with, with earnings that miraculously don't. <laughs> oh, no, all of our debts are fine. Don't worry. Yet everybody and their mother seemingly came out today and said, we, uh, we need money. Uh, Apple, apparently they're going to come out with another new phone. I wonder how much this one's going to cost. I mean, didn't they just come out with a new phone? It's like $1,400. Well, apparently they're going to have another new phone. Uh, that 5G thing, yeah, it's coming. Don't worry. It's not going to do any damage. All those waves and all that—it'll be fine. Like, what what could possibly go wrong? You know, it'll just—and it's—it's only a little bit. All the time, everywhere you go. And here's the sad thing: whether or not you want to participate in 5G or not, doesn't matter. Like, these towers are everywhere. They put them on everything. It, It's—we uh, got the freeway construction going on. I don't know if you look up on top of the new light poles. Yeah, you know what that is. Eight hundred. Nine five one zero five nine two. I know a lot of you. It's Amazon Prime Day. Uh, that got canceled. Even Amazon canceled Amazon Prime because of COVID. Apparently, that's going on right now. Uh, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. Uh, I've never actually ordered anything off of Amazon. Full disclosure: Amazon comes to my house almost every day. So you figure it out. I'm not. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody in my family. Uh, but somebody is ordering from Amazon all the time. Yes, it's Amazon Prime Day. Uh, so all the regular retailers is probably going to be a lot slower than normal for you guys today. Uh, so good luck on there. Uh, in between uh, clicking your orders, call the Patriot Trading Group, 800 951 0592, and put yourself some, away some gold and silver. Uh, you're going to be glad that you did. In other news, uh, Social Security, it's official. Made official today, a whopping 1.3%. Yep, that's all you're going to get from the no inflation. And it's so funny. Between, if you went from 1989 to 1999, the average COLA adjustment was over 5%. From 99 to 09, it was down to 3%. From oh you know oh nine to, to twenty twenty, uh, that number is now down below two percent. I think the, I may even be below one percent. It's right near, right near that number because we had uh, like four years in the last ten where you got zero. Uh, the biggest was a little over two percent. Uh, all the rest of them were a pittance. This is another one. Uh, used vehicle prices, the biggest surge in fifty one years. 
There's no inflation. There you go. I just proved it. 800-951-0592. Hug a cow. Call the Patriot Trading Group. Either way, it'll lower your anxiety. Everyone take care. God bless. We'll be back for hump day.